got net logo open for this assignment, which is activity activity 413. And we're going to be using this program, which is a simulation software. Available, uh, if you're in my class, the installer <laughs> file is available on the LMS in the file section. Or you could just Google net logo 5.0.5 and get an installer either for Windows or for Mac, depending on which system you are currently using. So we're just going to kind of go through here a little bit about this simulation software and navigation of, of it and how to utilize the interface. So NetLogo is open. We're going to open up a model library within the models uh, section. So we're going to the models library. We're going to grab a particular biology model. And we get this window open like this. We're going to go to biology. And we're going to go to wolf sheep predation. And we hit open, and now it loads that particular model. And obviously, you saw that there's quite a few preset models within NetLogo that you can certainly explore and play with. Um, I want to point out within the activity, we'll get we're going to go through a couple of the questions in the activity in just a second. I just want to kind of point out a couple of the windows you have available when you have the models open. Obviously, here here's your interface menu, which uh, interface window, excuse me, which allows you to uh, set up what factors you want within your, within your simulation. So you can, for example, in this simulation, turn on or off grass. You can have it so there's grass on or there's grass off. You also could make it so that the grass regrows at a specific rate. You can change around how much the, uh, each gains from food, how, fa how fast or often they reproduce, and a few other things as well. When, you're have, when you have the setups uh, the way you want, you would press this setup button and then it would get the simulation ready, and then you can hit go, and you can run the simulation. And this is basically a simulating an ecosystem of wolf, wolves and sheep. And you can let it run, and when you're ready and satisfied, you can just hit stop. It looks like we got a lot of sheep and wolves and so forth. Okay, we could stop that at that point. You get the idea, okay? That's a lot. So you can set up again and reset it, that's fine. So I also wanna show you here, there's also this info tab. This info tab is kind of good. It's going to be your lifeline for the second model that you will be opening, which is the page rank uh, model. You're going to want to read this and understand what the simulation is actually showing you and what it what it actually is, you know, how to use it. Because not all the of the models have an interface that's as involved as the wolf sheep predation one. Some don't have any interface on them and you just run them. Uh, but this obviously has lots of information about this particular model and all of the ones in NetLogo have this information. So in uh, the activity 413, we already uh, checked, bless you, we already did the setup of both and then we clicked go and we understood we saw that the she sheep population started to increase and the wolf population started to decrease and we could you know graph those populations over time using this bottom left window. Uh, if we run the simulation 10 times and run it past 250 or until it's stable, we can get different results each time. So check this out. Notice how we have not changed anything. If we press go and let it run for 250 ticks, you can think of those as rounds, by the way. All right. Now all of a sudden you see how we have eventual yeah, recovery. That was pretty close, though. The sheep almost went extinct, but the wolves are extinct in that, in that one. So we can press that up again. Let's try another one. This time, <coughs> looks like the sheep are almost all gone. And now they're there. the sheep make another comeback. And the wolves are gone. One more time. Looks like again. Yeah, it looks like the sheep are going to win. Yep, each time. The sheep almost lose, and then they make a comeback, and then they just blow themselves up like that. Yep. <laughs> All right. So now let's turn on. Let's turn on the grass this time. Let's set it so that now the sheep have to have to survive too by eating the grass. So when we press setup, now notice we have some brown patches. If we hit go, now we have this sort of balance, right? So the wolves are still there, the sheep are still there, the grass population, and all that. Yep, see those populations eventually will balance out, so you take that out. Okay? So 
what your objective is in this particular activity, once you've kind of played with the simulation and checked out and see what happens, <laughs> kind of get used to the interface, your job is to uh, describe a way to attempt to determine if the results or patterns you saw during your first run will hold in the following runs. And uh, at the same time, you're then going to be playing with specific parameters to see what happens to the simulation, okay? So you only have to, when you, when you see the activity, you'll see what I mean. You only have to um, get the, I'll drag it in here so you can see it. You only have to pick one of these particular uh, items to play with when you do this particular simulation. So you can you know, leave the other items alone, but try different values of, say, the initial number of sheep. Try different values of the um, initial number of uh, wolves and see what happens to your simulation when you play with those numbers, okay? From all the way extremes, all the way for the most, all the way to the least, and somewhere in the middle. Now, when, uh, when we also continue in this activity, we're going to be looking at a new model, and that new model is called page rank, all right? So the page rank model, it tells us in the uh, NetLogo library, we go to the models library, we go to sample models, which we're in, and then go to computer science, computer science and then we're going to go to page rank you can't see there it is okay and we hit create now remember the page rank uh, module involves something if you hit this setup and you hit go with this you could also step by one round if you look at this model you're not going to get a whole lot out of this because you're going to say what in the world is going on here okay most likely so you're uh, going to have to and you can go to stop that. You're going to have to go to the info tab and you're going to read about it. Okay, not saying do it now, but um, this particular model is not going to make sense to you unless you actually read the info tab. So the questions that you're asked about this model include what is the uh, di what are the methods that PageRank uses and summarized in your own words. Um, experiment with the interface tab. What are the things you can change about the interface tab? The simulation has a step button that allows you to advance one tick at a time. If you click setup and then use the step button to examine behavior of one surfer as it moves around the network, what do you notice about how the surfer moves? And take time, and again, when you, when you go that and say, well, what does that mean? Again, you're going to be reading the info tab to kind of see what those mean, okay? What parameter values do you use and what, um, what, is your, um, what parameter values do you change and what is your observations and conclusions from that? So again, you'll have to read the information on that to kind of get that. So NetLogo is a very powerful uh, simulator for uh, a variety of models, and it's one of the things you're going to be doing in these two. We're going to be checking out other uh, simulations as well, and we're going to talk about that also in, in, this, in this lesson. So let's go ahead, and we're going to go to a third model. All the, by the way, the things that we just discussed will all be in activity 413. So 413 just involves these two. But the next assignment that you're going to be doing is going to be one, and let's see if I make sure I open this up in the right spot. I'm going to make sure. All right, so we're going to open up now the Vance um, model. Now, this one also is going to involve us having to check the info tab a little bit. So I'm going to give you a quick synopsis of what's going to happen. In the center of the page here, this basically highlights what we are going to be seeing within this model. So the world that the, this little ant is in is a, group, is a grid of patches. It's a virtual ant of each you know, name, right? Each patch can either be black or white. They're all white at the start. The vans follow a simple rule. They face north, south, east, or west. At each time step, a van will move to the next patch. It will look at the new patch, and if the new patch is white, the van colors the patch black but if the new patch is black, the band colors the patch white and turns left. Okay, that's it. So if the band goes on one side of the screen, it will wrap around. So you could picture a large donut. That's kind of what this, what the world looks like to this van. I know it's, you're going to look at a flat screen, but the way the wrap works, you'll see. So there's our van, right? He's facing south currently. So we set up. Okay, and if we go forward. So right now, this is kind of what happens. We can just let this sit. We can let this run. 
Maybe go make a sandwich. Right. Come back. That sounds good. Yeah. Make this go a little faster. We can do that. Yeah. Can we make it a little faster. Yeah, we can. Pick up the speed a little bit. See, right now I see nothing. Not much is happening, right? It's yeah. It looks like it's, it's got a little art artistry, you know, going. It's it's wrapping around. You know, it's kind of just minding his own business. You can you can speed it up, but it, you know we want dramatic effect here. So he's just kind of. Doing his thing. He's coloring b patches black. He's coloring patches white. Not even stopping to take a break at all, you know. He's just kind of doing his thing. Starting, I know, right? So right now, when you look at this, the, you kind of is like, okay, that's all he's doing. He's just kind of running around, and he's just kind of doing his thing. And, you know, you look at this, and you're probably not thinking this as much, right? Very, very simple rule. Very, very simple things that it has to do. It's just kind of just... Doing its thing. Does it seem to be like, does there seem to be any pattern at all? No, there doesn't really seem to be any pattern, right? It's just basically a blotch of black and white patches, right? So that's all that's happening right now. Let me speed up just a little bit. Let him go a little bit faster. Kind of do his thing a little bit faster. Okay? <laughs> He's still doing his thing. Or she. Could be she, you know? He's like stuck in his. He's in the middle, right? He's in his own, his own little world right now, right? Now he's just kind of doing his thing. Oh, he made it a little bit out there. Still just kind of doing his thing. You know, could be she, could be he. Could be it. Why not? <laughs> so he's still going. He's still going. I don't want it to go too fast because I want you know, want to make sure that... Uh, but you see how right now it's just... Just kind of doing its thing, and I know you're looking at this like, okay, you know, like you probably by now you probably fast forwarded to this particular portion of the video, and you're still just, oh, still doing the same thing. Okay, what's the point? You know, and that's probably what you're looking at this right now and saying, what's the point? If you let this run, inevitably, you think that maybe the entire screen could turn black or white. Do you think there will be? Maybe a series of patches that will be black and a series of patches will be white. Or do you think that part of it, just the center parts will be black and none of the edges will ever be black at all? All the edges will be white. So you let the simulation run and you just kind of let it do its thing. Hyperdrive. Let it go a little faster. I'm trying to pinpoint the dramatic effect. And it's just kind of doing its thing. Still going. Still going. Just... Kind of blah blah blah. It's going a little faster now. We gave it a little bit of coffee, you know, a little bit energized. Still going. Lots of work to do. These, these patches need coloring, man. I got to keep going. Yeah. Maybe he's drawing a picture. Maybe it's maybe it's going to be a picture of your letter grade. Oh, wait a minute. What's going on here? Wait a minute. What's going on? What is it doing? Ah, what's going on here? It looks like it's found something to do. It, it found a way out, and now all of a sudden it is making slow but steady progress to the northeast part of the screen. So you see how it was doing something for a long time, and then all of a sudden now it's got this little predictable pattern to it. So it appeared to be unpredictable. It appeared that it was sort of random, right? But now all of a sudden, and remember it wraps because it's a Taurus. So it's going to wrap on both sides of the screen. Now it's going to go down to the bottom of the screen. So you'll see it coming up there. Yeah. So all of a sudden, it's doing something that you didn't think it was going to do. You thought it was just going to continue to be blah, you know, just going to continue to just randomly go around the center of the thing, color and patches, black and white. All of a sudden, we got this strip that just all of a sudden happens. Okay? If, and here's the thing, is if we, if we were to run this model again from the start and let it go to this again, the exact same thing is going to happen. So we call this deterministic behavior. 
because if we work hard and fast and thoroughly enough, we can predict this Vance movements as much as we want because it has very simple rules to follow, okay? But if we incorporate some randomness to this, and we're just going to stop this running for now. You get the idea. Let's speed it up a little bit so you can kind of see it. It's going to continue to do that a couple of times as well if we speed this up. Yeah. Let's speed up a little bit. All right, there goes another one, right? There you go. Now, now it's on hyperdrive. Oh, that time it went the other way. Look at that. Still going. Oh, there it goes. We're making a video of it right now. We're making a video of it right now. I reversed it. Did you notice I reversed it? No, I thought I reversed it. I thought I no, I didn't. I didn't reverse it. We should speed it up all the way and then take a time lapse. It is sped up. All yeah, way. I think I have it all the way up now. I didn't finish. I think we should take a time lapse of it while it's sped up. Yeah. Oh, where'd you go? Okay. There it goes. I got keep My computer can't keep up with it now. <laughs> all right. So you get the idea, right? But if we were to if we were to change it so that it there maybe there was a random maybe once in a while it would turn right when it was supposed to turn left, right? If we throw in some random behavior, then it's what's called stochastic. So right now, the way it's programmed, if it always turns left in one occasion, turns right in the other occasion, it's completely deterministic, okay? Completely deterministic and predictable. But if thrown in some random things, we can make it stochastic. Now, I'm not going to spoil it for you, but in this particular activity, you are going to make it stochastic. So you're going to program and change one little thing about the program to make it so that there is a random element to this Vance movement, okay? And at the same time, it's also going to give you a way to track that information, okay? So um, at this point, I just want to kind of get you set in your way because you're ready for your NetLogo 4A uh, into 413 and 421. So hopefully this was helpful to get used to the interface. So have a wonderful